What child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap and sleep? Good morning and welcome to another edition of Christmas 365. I got a little confession for you this morning. I don't believe in Santa Claus. Not only do I not believe in Santa Claus, okay, I am anti Santa Claus in the deepest parts of my heart. And, and, and not because he's a jolly, a jolly big guy in a red suit that wants to break into my house, okay? At least he's bringing stuff in and not taking stuff out, right? But I, I am anti Santa Claus, get this, because I don't want him getting credit for the things that I get my kids. Yeah, you heard it right. I don't want old St. Nick getting credit for my hard-working money that purchases the gifts for my children. So, yeah, but as they, as they grow, there's just something in me that when they look at me and say Santa Claus, I just cannot break their hearts and tell them that he is really just robbing daddy of all the credit. So I go along with the, the scheme. But, you know, I'm thinking about all of the stuff my kids have, all of their toys, I mean, look at this stuff. I mean, this room is, is clean compared to how it is normally. Normally, you can't even walk in here. There's so much toys everywhere. And each one of these toys was given as a gift. Somebody worked hard for the, the, the money to purchase these gifts. And whether they were given to us free or we worked for that money, somebody, somebody labored those gifts and so it reminds me of, of Ephesians chapter 2 Paul goes into talking about the complete depravity of man listen and he says as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins that was all of us in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air and the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So he's saying, you know, we were born, we, I mean, we followed the course of the world no matter what. I mean, that was our nature. That's, that's who we were. We were headed for destruction. We were selfish. And it says that um, all of us also lived among them at the time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. We have no we have no choice in that matter. That's what we did. And like the rest, we were by nature objects of God's wrath. Now get this. Here's a loving father. He says, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive together with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with, in the heavenly realms with Christ Jesus, and that it was nothing that we can boast about. It wasn't because of our good works, but because of God's good grace. We can't boast about what God has given to us in the, in the form of a, of a baby being born to save the world. We can't boast in, in, in working for that. We can't boast in being good enough for that because we worked, and yet God still gave. Now, I purchased probably most of these toys. Uh, some of them were given to us, and, and some of them were, were, you know, just appeared somehow, but not by Santa Claus. But yet, each one of these gifts was given in love, but we labored for them. And yet, the greatest gift ever was given to us way before we could ever ask for it. See, we didn't ask Jesus to come and save us. We didn't ask Jesus to love us. He did. And he did so freely. He did all the work. He did all the labor. And he gave us all the benefits, all the joys. This room can be a mess sometimes. So in our lives, Father God is there to help us clean this stuff up. 
So this Christmas, remember it's not about you know giving and getting and you know hanging out with family. It's not about December 25th. It's about a baby that was born so that way you know he could labor and do all the work that we might reap all the toys, that we might reap all of the benefits, that he might pour out upon us all. God bless you. Merry Christmas.